So uh, thank you very much everybody for attending. Um, I'm a couple of minutes down, so I will try and catch up. So um, this particular talk um, is around theming and why we created a theme to help people, uh, help our clients upgrade to Moodle 4. Um, it is also relevant to, to LMS and workplace. It's not just workplace specific. So I will just introduce myself. So um, my name is Ed or Edward, if I'm naughty. Um, I'm the product lead at Titus. Um, so I help define the, the product strategy and vision. Um, for this particular context, I help to work with our clients to prioritize the features. Big process involved behind that, but we won't cover that today, unless you've got a couple of hours. Um, and I collaborate with cross-functional teams at Titus. So Titus is a premium certified Moodle partner. I think I got that right. Uh, we help create engaging, personalized, and integrated learning platforms through our products, solutions, and services. So these are some of the key things that, um, or slides rather, that I'm gonna talk through. So when it comes to upgrading, um, it seems to be a bit of an upgrading afternoon actually, um, based on what's in this room, but I'll be coming at it from a slightly different angle. Um, so what were our challenges when upgrading to Moodle 4? Um, why did we happen to create a theme? How did we create the theme? So I'll go through some of the, the tools and processes at a very high level, um, some of which have kind of already been reflected in, in Jason's talk earlier from UCL. Um, and then I want to cover, but not spend too long, on some of the key features, especially around workplace and everything being tenant aware, which is very important for us and, and some of the clients that we work with. Um, mobile access and accessibility as well are some, some key areas. Doesn't matter if it's workplace or LMS, doesn't matter if it's Moodle, they're, they're, they're still really important areas that we've had to focus on, especially over the last 12 months. And then a, a little bit about the future, if I have time. Lock the doors, no one's getting out. Right, okay. So what were our challenges? So one of the key things that we have come across, just like many Moodle partners, I'm sure, is around when we're actually gonna upgrade um, the Moodle. So whether it's LMS or workplace, um, feel free to correct me if that date is wrong. I'm pretty sure that's right. So the long-term support for Moodle LMS is the end of 2025. You mean 3.11 before you carry Oh, so, sorry, yes, yes, correct. Yeah, 3.11, sorry. The long-term support for Moodle 3.11 is the end of 2025. Not Moodle in general, don't worry. Um, Moodle, in terms of, uh, well, I got someone's attention, so it worked. Um, so in terms of Moodle Workplace, I don't think, and that's why I've not put it on here, that there's a specific date around supportability ending. But that was enough on the LMS side to kind of get us to, to need to take action here. So some of our challenges are listed here, not all of them. So the first one is plugin compatibility. So obviously the plugins database is thousands of plugins. Some are supported on different versions. This is a key thing for us. As soon as we upgrade a client, if they're using 30 plus plugins, for instance, we have to obviously check to make sure that they work. Um, similarly, I mean, a theme is a plugin, but we've got theme compatibility. That's obviously very relevant. A lot of the work that we've done is uh, in the past was quite bespoke and custom. That led to quite a lot of technical debt, which I'll come back to. Um, but we needed to make sure that anything that we're going to be providing our hundreds of customers with is going to be compatible, of course, on Moodle 4. And there was a lot of change, a lot of positive changes between Moodle 3 and Moodle 4. And that's for LMS and Workplace. Um, testing process. So not only did we need to test things internally at Titus in terms of the, the plugins, the theme, etc., but our clients often have their own testing processes. So there's a huge amount of time there. Uh, the user training element, if we're upgrading people, it's not just a question of the, the DevOps team upgrading a platform. Obviously, the customer needs to be communicated each step of the way. They might have multiple platforms, test platform, staging platform, separate sandbox, uh, sandbox production platform. There's a, there's a lot involved, and it takes a lot of time. Um, da, da, da. Similarly, with the upgrades, there can be a lot of downtime as well. We need to make it as slick as possible with our DevOps team. Um, in terms of customization, re-implementation, I've got a word of that a little bit better, that was probably a huge one for us. So any custom development work and huge bits that have been bolted onto the side of Moodle required a really thorough testing process when we were upgrading. All of this does kind of plug into the theme as well, because um, on 99% of our sites, we have some form of um, either productized now or previously bespoke theme. 
Compliance and accessibility, I'm actually going to come around to later. Uh, I'm not even going to bother with my notes. And uh, there's a documentation and support side of things. So we need to keep everybody informed of the new functionality, make sure people understand what's coming next, how to use the platform. There's so many steps involved. I'm definitely behind on time. Right, okay, so why, why did we create a theme? Um, well, I've already mentioned around the need to upgrade from Moodle 3 to Moodle 4. We need these bug and security fixes. We need people to be in support. Uh, we wanted to reduce the amount of technical debt that we had from all of our bespoke developments, and that's where, at Titus, we've decided to take more of a, a productized approach where applicable, because um, it means we can liaise with our, client, uh, with our clients and understand their needs and what's, what we can potentially build into the theme or a supporting plugin to the theme, and then allow all of our clients to benefit. Um, so I'm not going to run into, go into each of these points now just because of time, I'm very aware of it. Um, but some of the key ones, again, why we created a theme was really around the customization and control um, and being able to allow organizations to change as much as they want to change, change as much as possible. Moodle, the Moodle default theme, uh, well, uh, boost, the boost theme is very, very clean, massive improvement on Moodle 3. But a lot of our workplace clients in particular needed a lot more, they needed to be on brand. LMS, we find people can be a lot more flexible. They want it nice and clean. Workplace ever so slightly different. Some of the other points that are listed on here, I will cover on further slides. So this is just an example of a couple of the clients that we work with. LMS and Moodle Workplace, Network Rail, Labour Party, UCL, um, CNN, Superdry, etc. So you can see that we work with quite a, a range of organizations, basically. So how did we create the theme? Well, the first thing I wanted to mention was the tools side of things, and these have been incredibly beneficial. Um, so from the product side, uh, I probably couldn't live without any of these tools. So the Jira side um, is really for, more so for the developers and having our backlog and picking up tickets, adding the user stories in there where applicable, um, making sure we get everything planned in. Product board, um, something I started using this year, super useful, it allows me to kind of track the, the cost of things a lot better as well. Anyone that uses Jira a lot, it's a very powerful tool, but it can be an absolute utter nightmare at times to try and customize and configure. Product board uh, is very specifically focused on product. You can have your own roadmaps, etc. I'm not trying to upsell that product, don't worry about it. And then uh, Miro, so that's a super useful like whiteboarding tool. Um, Mo I actually came across it because Moodle, the Moodle Workplace Product Advisory Group used it first, I'd heard about it, not used it, and they used it in a workshop, and, and I just thought, I, I need to get on board with this, I need to use this. So we, we use it, you can probably not really tell how we're using it from these screenshots, but to kind of collect our user stories, and, work, and we share these mirror boards with our clients, and we, we have a collaborative approach, make sure we understand what features they want in the theme, and prioritize them accordingly. So, just again, based on time, I will speed through this slide a little bit quicker. So we work in a, a, a Kanban methodology. So we'll have a list of tickets and our developers just kind of pick them out as they're prioritized in that area, as opposed to working to strict individual sprints. Um, we're now very customer led, more so than we were in the past for sure. So we have a customer portal where people can vote on ideas and submit new ideas. We do that through product board again, why it's super useful. Anyone on product-based uh, product teams should it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, and we collect all of our customer insights through there as well. And that's been absolutely invaluable for me on the product side. Some of the considerations, um, I have to be very aware because I'm part of the product advisory group. The last thing I want to do is to either design or implement something that's going to directly conflict with what could be released in the main product. So particularly the product advisory group on the workplace side, that's super important. And also, a huge consideration is around what versions of Moodle our plugins are going to be supported on. Because the more we build, obviously, the more testing that needs to happen on these different versions. And obviously, Moodle has its long-term support version of, of 4.1. So there's been a lot of considerations around that. So I will zoom through some of the key features. Um, huge amounts of customization. The, the amount that you can rebrand on the workplace platform is huge. You can see. Some of, the site wire, some of the settings on the left-hand side, we've got configurable login pages with different variants. We've got a site homepage that allows for like marketing tiles and uh, carousel, 
uh, shortcuts, similar kind of features to what you'd expect on a WordPress website. Uh, we have, where's my GIF? My GIF wasn't showing. Pretend you can see it. Um, the ability to choose the um, order of login options on the login page. So for instance, a lot of people prioritize Office 365 in, uh, logins, for instance. So you don't want the manual options at the top. So we move those under a collapsable area. Um, site homepage, I already mentioned. That's just a quick example of a screenshot. At least that one's showing. Other key features, simple things like color gradients that match people's branding. If you want that on the top navigation bar, you can see there's a screenshot there, just to, almost as proof on the left-hand side that our theme is kind of workplace, uh, workplace compliant as well. So, so that's one of our key points really, is that it's, it's tenant aware. So all of our set, I'm not gonna say that actually, 99.9 .9 of our theme settings are compatible with multi-tenancy on Moodle Workplace. So you can brand up all these different sub-platforms completely differently, which is fantastic. And also a game changer for our sales team as well, because it's a lot easier to have conversations with people when you've got a site with someone's branding on. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, the course library, we wanted to make some initial improvements. This is just two examples of, I'm not gonna say dark mode, it's not dark mode, a dark, a dark background, a dark, darker theme and a lighter theme. Um, we're aware of the changes that the workplace team are kind of implementing. Do, 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 do. Uh, we've introduced course banner images, uh, activity navigation, uh, changes to the course index menu. Huge one for us was a site-wide footer. A lot of people really missed that, especially people that had some of our older themes at Titus that had a, the uh, a footer that sits at the bottom of the page. So that we, we have that alongside the standard uh, Moodle footer as well. Uh, mobile access was huge for us, so uh, we are taking a, a, a lot more of a mobile first approach now. Um, the Moodle app isn't always an option due to restrictions around branding, especially with workplace, it has to, be, has to look in a very specific way and the app can be a little bit restrictive at times. So cer certain circumstances the app, Moodle or the workplace app is great, other times it doesn't quite work. You can see to kind of, uh, we've introduced like extra navigation banners under certain uh, resolutions as well, just to kind of um, make the experience on mobile devices um, more friendly as well. So accessibility, I've got two slides on this and I've only got about a minute left. So there's been a couple of talks on this already. Um, essentially, we didn't know anything about accessibility. I think it's fair to say really about 12 months ago, but a lot of our clients have been really good in educating us. That includes the accessibility, accessibility expert at UCL. Um, what is accessibility? It's essentially, led by these four guiding principles, is your website perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust? Um, I know Moodle LMS has just been WCAG 2.1 AA certified. I think Moodle Workplace are looking to do the same as well. Uh, our theme is built with accessibility in mind, so we're making constant changes and iterations to that. Um, mm -mm -mm. And what are the end results? Well, essentially creating this theme, especially on the workplace side, has enabled us to simultaneously upgrade and move our customer base to Moodle 4, whilst massively improving the personalization and building on functionality within the platform. In terms of the future, that's just a few extra things that we may consider doing in the future, looking at other technologies to improve the theme and improve performance, like React, having potentially having accessibility audit ourselves uh, and kind of creating a, a product advisory board with our, our customers as well is something that we want to do to get even more targeted feedback. And that is a quick summary slide that I'm going to leave on there because I've run out of time. So thank you very much. I hope you took something away from that.